Hey there everyone, how's it going? This is Nick here again at NJ's Bricks and we're going to continue our discussion from last week about missing minifigures. Today we'll examine which Harry Potter characters have so egregiously avoided Lego representation up to this point. Remember to like and subscribe below if you enjoy this content and hit the bell to make sure you catch my future releases. Harry Potter as a licensed Lego theme has been going strong since all the way back in 2001 and it was just one of the earliest IPs that Lego licensed two years after Star Wars was introduced with The Phantom Menace. 2001's Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone brought with it the Plastic Boy Wizard that has since expanded into one of the most prolific Lego themes. Today, I'm going to go through and name 15 different characters in no particular order that deserve to be commemorated in minifigure form. I considered traits like story impact, screen time, and fun factor to name a few. Make sure you let me know in the comments below which missing minifigures you think I missed or which ones that I've pointed out that you agree with. Let's jump into the list with a two-for-one treat to kick things off. First, we're going to talk about Bill and Charlie Weasley. It is quite sad to me that in 23 years of LEGO Harry Potter releases, we still are not able to unite the entire Weasley family. Of Molly and Arthur's seven children, only five of them exist in minifigure form. While Charlie is seldom physically present throughout the series, he does have a legitimate role to play in Book 1 with the extraction of Norbert and Book 4 during the first Triwizard task. Now, Bill, on the other hand, plays a legitimately important role in Deathly Hallows. Shell Cottage, where he lives, serves as both the safe house and the burial site for Dobby. May he rest in peace. And Bill also features prominently after he gets attacked by Fenrir Greyback at the Battle of Hogwarts later in the book. We haven't gotten these figures in at least something like an advent calendar. And this is a travesty. We need Bill and Charlie Weasley. Next up on the list is Mundungus Fletcher. Mundungus has got to be one of the most oft-mentioned recurring characters to have never been made into a minifigure from Harry Potter. He is featured in multiple scenes that get peppered throughout the Order of the Phoenix as a member of the Order, although reluctantly, and he is a prominent figure in multiple different plot lines of the Deathly Hallows. He is the one whose cowardice leads to the death of Mad-Eye Moody and whose greed leads to the acquisition of Slytherin's Locket by Dolores Umbridge. He's got a reasonable amount of screen time and twice as many book mentions, and you would think that he would have been minifigured by now, but no. Next is Bartimius Crouch Sr. Now, I was legitimately shocked when researching for this video and discovered that Barty Crouch Sr. has never been minifigured. While his son was featured in a multi-identity minifig alongside Mad-Eye Moody in the polyjuiced form, Sr. himself remains curiously absent. Barty Crouch is an absolutely crucial cog throughout the whole plot of Goblet of Fire, and his actions caused a domino effect that enabled the resurrection of Voldemort. Though he is more heavily featured in the book, Movie Crouch gets a fair bit of screen time as well. He appears in the Triwizard Tournament introduction, the Champion's announcement, the first task, the Karkaroff trial flashback, and his death scene, Barty Crouch Sr. should be a layup for this list. I can't believe he hasn't been a minifigure yet. Next up in the same book is Ludovic Bagman. I've got plenty of gripes with the choices made throughout these films, but one of my most lamented book-to-movie cuts is the character of Ludo Bagman. Head of the Department of Magical Games and Sports, Ludo plays a hilariously haphazard gambling addict with a penchant for coming up short. He pops up here and there throughout the fourth book, perhaps most notably giving the Weasley twins action on their bizarre bet for Victor Crumb to catch the snitch in a Bulgarian loss at the Quidditch World Cup which we know would go on to be a winner. He would reappear in multiple Triwizard tasks, shamelessly offering to help Harry win despite himself being an impartial judge in the tournament. We would later find out that Bagman had a significant wager on Harry to win the Triwizard tournament as a means to cover his prior debt with the Goblins. And to be honest with you, that's on the Goblins for letting Bagman wager on the outcome of an event in which he could directly influence the outcome. He would be my personal number one choice for this list. I love Bagman. Doesn't show up in the films, and I think that was ridiculously unfair. Next on my list is Bathilda Bagshot. Bathilda Bagshot is one of the most OG characters of this entire saga. Though we never see her in person until Deathly Hallows, she is mentioned in most of the books by Hermione as having authored Hogwarts, a history. Surprising readers, Bathilda would go on to play a critical role in the seventh novel, having lived near young Dumbledore during his dalliance with Grindelwald at Godric's Hollow. 
Basilda's bagshaw brain was also the source of information for much of Rita Skeeter's The Life and Lies of Albus Dumbledore. Given how centered her information is in driving much of the emotional plot of Hallows, not to mention the appearance of her rotting animated corpse, who didn't love that, Basilda deserves to be a Lego minifigure. Another character that featured pretty prominently in one subplot of the seventh book was Xenophilius Lovegood. Readers may have deduced his future importance when he arrived on the scene at the Weasley wedding in the opening chapters, and he would go on to be the expository paintbrush for the introduction of the titular Deathly Hallows. Luna is an eternally beloved character from the series, and her father's inspiration is a large part of what makes her so unique. I made a previous video where I discussed new ideas for different Lego sets in various themes, and one of the Harry Potter sets I proposed was the Lovegood Home. This would be a cool opportunity for Lego to give us a distinct building full of Easter eggs while providing us a Xenophilius Lovegood minifigure. Moving on here, we've got Arabella Fig. Figgy, as she is colloquially known, is another OG character in the series appearing multiple times in earlier books undercover as a neighbor to the Dursleys and occasional babysitter of Harry. It wasn't until Order of the Phoenix that we learned Mrs. Fig was a plant all along, a squib tasked by Dumbledore with keeping tabs on the Chosen One in his youthful years. Famous for her feline friends and the ability to lie under oath to protect Harry from ministry overreach, that's right, squibs cannot see the Dementors, but she said that she could. I think it's about time we get a poly bag that includes Mrs. Fig and maybe five or six cats minimum. By the way, we stand Mrs. Fig. Good job lying under oath. Proud of you. Regulus Black, next on the list, the notorious R.A.B. himself. Regulus is an interesting one when it comes to minifig representation, having never actually showed up in person due to being, you know, dead. We don't really know what he even looks like. His discovery of Voldemort's horcruxes and subsequent actions to remove the original locket from the cave are absolutely central to the 6th and 7th books, and his impact cannot be overlooked. Regulus seems like the type of character that would make the most sense to show up in some sort of polybag set, perhaps with like Creature in some sort of cave theme offering, but we need to see him. Next on my list is Merope Gone. Merope is the second character on this list who has never actually appeared in the flesh. Bouncing back to my Star Wars video from last week, Merope Gaunt's absence is similar to that of Shmi Skywalker, with the difference being that Merope never actually shows up on screen. She does, however, feature rather heavily in the book flashback sequences of Half-Blood Prince, and her role and influence as Voldemort's mother are obviously central to the events of the entire saga. It is a real shame that all of the Gaunt flashbacks were cut from the sixth film, because it is by far my favorite book in the series, and it might be the most disappointing of all the movies, but at least we did get Jim Broadbent's lovely portrayal of Horace Slughorn. I thought he was wonderful. The rest of the film, pretty much trash. Next up on the list here, Marge Dursley. I put Marge on this list not because I think she is particularly a good or an interesting character, but because she is the central figure of one of the funniest and most memorable movie moments. Alfonso Cuaron did a lovely job shepherding the films towards more adult themes, in Prisoner of Azkaban, and Harry blowing up Aunt Marge in a well-earned fit of rage is a lasting film image for me. I would be really curious to see how Lego would approach doing such a figure. It wouldn't really be proportionally appropriate to make her into something like a big fig, so maybe we would get a weird, like, something shaped more like an oversized Hagrid minifigure. I'm really not sure how they would do it, but a bouncing, ballooned-up Marge Dursley minifigure would be a very funny one to add to the collection. <laughs> Next on my list, I never knew this guy's first name until I was researching this video, John Dollish. Dollish is not a particularly central figure to the series in any way, but it is really funny that he managed to work himself into so many books by becoming the ministry punching bag for the Order of the Phoenix. If I recall correctly, I believe he only appears in person once during the attempted apprehension of Dumbledore in the Order of the Phoenix, but he is, however, mentioned multiple times throughout the series as having been duped, defeated, jinxed, or otherwise bested by Dumbledore and various Order members, with the utmost regret. It is not so great when you're most remembered for losing, just ask the Buffalo Bills. Dollish's record versus the Order is about as strong as Voldemort's record against Harry, that would be O for X. His consistent background presence and role in the story feels strong enough to warrant a minifigure, though it does feel pretty unlikely at this point. Moving on here, getting towards the end of the list, we have Cormac McLaggen. Recurring throughout the sixth book, consistent 
Thorne and Ron Weasley's side, Cormac McLaggen should have absolutely featured in some sort of set by this point, either in like a Quidditch tryouts theme set or a slug club party theme set or even simply an advent calendar. Cormac is an important figure in the trajectory of Ron and Hermione's relationship, situated as the petty pawn in their childish courtship. Pompous and proud, Cormac McLaggen is the poster boy for jock mansplainers everywhere. He provides some pretty funny comic relief, and he appears on screen in multiple scenes while being a topic of discussion in others. Other characters have been minifigured for less, so we should have seen a McLaggen fig by now. Next up on the list, we have Firenze. Now, the template for Firenze is pre-existing. The centaur for Harry Potter was released as a minifigure in 2020 as part of set 75967, Umbridge's Encounter. It is kind of surprising that it took that long for them to make a centaur, considering that their existence goes all the way back to the first novel and appearing in the first film. I would not have been surprised to see if they had made one for one of the original Sorcerer's Stone sets, but that never happened. It would be cool for them to give us any of the specifically named centaur characters, the most likely of which would be Firenze. I wouldn't mind getting some kind of sweet Firenze's divination class looking set with a lot of greebling and detail in the natural growing elements within the stone classroom walls. I think that could be pretty cool and would fit into their smaller like classroom themes. Surprised they haven't done that one yet. Uh, moving on now, we've got a couple left on this list. We are looking at Rufus Scrimgeour. Other than maybe Barty Crouch Sr., this was the one to me that absolutely blew my mind when a Brickling search returned zero results. Scrimgeour is a pretty essential tertiary cog in the Half-Blood Prince and extending into the early parts of Deathly Hallows before his death. Portrayed by the inimitable Bill Nye, Scrimgeour has significant on-screen time and dialogue. He is even discussed at further length in the novel by Harry and Dumbledore, where it is explained that his battle-hardened or past has earned him the trust of the British wizarding community during wartime. His absence as a minifigure is especially egregious when you consider that his replacement, the imperious pious thick niece, even has his own minifigure. I am sure Nai would love to add another minifig to put next to his infamous Davy Jones, so we definitely need Rufus Scrimgeour. And then last on this list, we have Antioch, Cadmus, and Ignotus Peverell. We opened the list with a two-for-one special, and we're going to close the list with a three-for-one super special. I am surprised that LEGO has not found a way to work the three brothers of Hallow's lore into the minifigure machine. There are other historically centralized characters that have appeared, such as the Hogwarts founder showing up in set 71043. You would think that they had done some sort of Tale of the Three Brothers themed set that could include these characters as minifigures, and I am sure that Potter fans would love to add these three to their collections. These even seem like the type of characters you might see show up in an exclusive product like a Comic-Con promo. Perhaps a future idea for LEGO? I would take it any way we can get it. That is going to do it for today's video. Let me know in the comments below which Harry Potter characters that you're missing the most as minifigures. Which gaps do they still have left to fill? And which of the minifigures that I mentioned do you hope to see in the future? Please like and subscribe below. If you enjoyed this content, I would really appreciate it. Also, make sure you go and check out last week's video. You can see me discussing which Star Wars characters that we're still missing. And sub to the channel so you don't miss my video next week where I will be discussing missing MCU characters. Have a great day, everyone, and I will see you next video.